you take your Bible and turn to Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. There is a uh, basic outline. Now this is nothing original here. I'm sure this message has been pointed out by many preachers through the ages. But you want to write this down um, or preach on four compromises that the devil tries to get Christians to do to keep them in the world. Four compromises. Now, in our studies, as we're studying Exodus, I want to point out once again, Pharaoh is a type of the devil. He's a type of the Antichrist. Um, He's a type of Satan. Egypt is a type of the world. And the the uh, Jews or or the uh, children of Israel is a type of the Christian being separated from the world, coming out from the world. And uh, here we have uh, finishing up in this uh, chapter eight, we have Pharaoh trying to make a compromise with um, Moses. And he makes, tries to make two compromises here in chapter 8 and two compromises in chapter 10. And these compromises is nothing new for the Christian. And these are compromises that the devil will use on the Christian. And he'll use them on uh, us today. And uh, it has to do with you not separating and serving God wholeheartedly, and being the servant of God that you should, or following the Lord in the way that you should. And the devil doesn't want you to be all out. He doesn't want you even to get saved, but if you get saved, he wants to slow your Christian life down where you're ineffective to serve God the way you should, or to obey God. And that's what we're going to look at this evening. Look at a verse... Exodus chapter 8 and verse 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do. For we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice the Lord our God as he shall command us. The first compromise here is, all right, if you're going to serve the Lord, that's okay. But stay in the land. Now what compromise is that today that we deal with? All right, if you're going to be a Christian, that's fine. But stay in the world. Stay in the world. Many people get saved and they never leave the world. They never separate from the world. The Lord wants the children of Israel to come out of Egypt to come do sacrifice. They want them to leave. He wants them to leave Egypt. He's commanded them to go down to holy ground and leave Egypt and go to a place that He's appointed them to sacrifice. Their sacrifice and the way they're to sacrifice and the command that they've been given to sacrifice is given by God, not by Pharaoh, not by the world. And uh, when, when, when a Christian gets saved, you know what the devil wants him to do? He wants him to just, okay, if you're going to be a Christian, that's fine. But stay in the world. Stay worldly. As long as there's no separation and no separating from the world, the devil's happy with you as a Christian. You know what the devil loves? He loves worldly Christians. He wants you to stay worldly. He wants you to stay in the world. Uh, James chapter 4, in verse 4, James gives this verse as kind of a jolt if he's talking to a so-called Christian, but I'll tell you, it would fit for today in the Laodicean church age. He says, Ye adulterers 
and adulteresses. Now, you don't believe that. That's probably a lot of saved Christians in liberal churches. Now, I mean, the, the sanctification of marriage is no longer respected among worldly Christians. That used to be a given that you didn't do that stuff. Now it's, it's just part of normal life. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? If you took the average professing Christian in the United States and asked them this question, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? What do you think their answer would be? Would they even know how to approach that answer? Would they even know that the question's in the Bible? They probably don't know that. It's enmity with God. Whosoever their old friend will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Separation has to do with you leaving the world. You know the first thing Christian should do when he gets saved? One of you needs to be grounded in salvation. I mean, the first thing I do when I lead somebody to the Lord is I teach them about the deity of Christ while I'm leading them to the Lord. Then I teach them about eternal security when he gets saved. Okay? But on his Christian growth, you know what he needs to start doing immediately? Leaving the world. Cleaning up from the world. Departing. Separating himself. The doctrine of separation, I believe, is one of the most unpreached and untaught doctrines in churches today. That we should separate from the world. We shouldn't be part of the world anymore. There will be a distinction between us and them. Uh, whether it's through morals, speech, doctrine, our own living, there will be seen a separation. A difference between the holy and the profane. There will be a change in one's life. There will be a difference. We need to separate. Look at John chapter 17. We taught this in Sunday school a few weeks back. John 17 verse 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. He's not praying for the world. He's praying for them to come out from the world that they don't. We covered it today that the, the evil of the world doesn't affect them. Look now verse 14 through 16. I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. There's a separation there. Through these plagues, God makes a separation of the children of Israel in the land of Goshen and the children of Egypt. He separates them. God's a God of separation. Separation is a biblical doctrine. It's one that's been forgotten and hasn't been practiced today by the modern day Christian. But yet it is still part of obeying God. Last of all on this point, take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and look at verse 14. Separation. See, do you practice separation? I mean, is that part of your Christian life? Have you separated yourself from the world? Do you not go to the places that the world goes to? Do you make a distinction between your entertainment and their entertainment? I mean, there, there, there should be some separation. Do you make a separation between the way you look and the way they look? I, I mean, it's that when somebody sees you, hears you, or is around you, do they know, hey man, that's, that's some of them Christian folks. Then people are godly. They, they, they don't do this stuff. But I'll be a separation. Look at 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion have light with darkness? 
And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. That's what the devil doesn't want. He doesn't want you to separate. You say, okay, but stay in the world. Stay in the world. Be part of the world. Get along with the world. Act like the world. Go to a place the world goes to. Talk like the world. Don't make a distinction. Separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Separation is what God wants, but the devil does not. His first compromise is he does not want you to separate. Second compromise is here in Exodus Exodus chapter 8 and verse 28. We see another compromise. It says, And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness only. Ye shall not go very far away and treat for me. All right, all right. You're going to go worship God. I I get that. Just just go a little way, but keep keep your interest in the world. Keep your hands in the world. You know, you got to listen to that Christian music, okay, but just keep the world's beat still in it. You know, you got to go worship the Lord, but keep, keep the world's dress in it. Y'all can go to your church building, you know, separate to your little building and stuff, but not very far. Don't get far out there. Don't get off and left field. Don't go do that street preaching stuff. No. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start um, shouting amen, singing glory to God. No, I mean, you, you limit it. Just don't go very far. You see the compromise? The uh, devil is fine. All right, you got to act like a Christian, but don't do it too wholeheartedly. Still laugh at the dir- dirty jokes, you know. That's fine. Don't go so far away off that they think that you're just some something different. Just stay pretty close. They can know that you're a Christian, but not that there's really that big of a difference. Right. Yeah, you know that's where the devil wants you to be. You know, I've met many Christians like that. I've met professing Christians at work, and they sit there and profess to be Christian, and they're talking about AC, DC, and this rock band and that rock band and they want to rock on for Jesus and do all this stuff and they're, they're listening to this music I'm like turn that garbage off well it's Christian no that's gangster music that ain't Christian I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about but you see that's their fault oh I'm serving God I'm listening to something Christian now you're listening to gangster music still I mean it's You've separated very little. Very little. I got tattoos, but it's a cross, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that's, that's kind of a, their mentality. We'll be a church, but we'll be a cool church. We'll be the skull church. Because the world loves skulls right now. They put it on everything. You know, it used to be skull was a symbol of poison and death. Not the symbol of a church. And uh, so that's a, it's a separation. Sure, they're a Christ-professing church. But they're not too far from the world. Just a little bit out. Just a little bit. That's your second compromise. You know, as long as the world still has control over you, they figure worshiping God, well, that might be okay. Just as long as you're just partially doing it. You know, Saul partially obeys God. 
in 1 Samuel chapter 15. He partially obeys them. But he saves the best of the sheep. He saves Agag. And in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, Samuel said, Hath the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now if you go back to uh, Exodus chapter 8, it, he says, uh, look what Moses says in verse 27. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as He shall command us. Let me tell you something. If you don't sacrifice according to the way God tells you to sacrifice, He doesn't want your sacrifice. He wants you to do it according to the way He tells you to do it. You know, you know what God wants? He wants us to be a Christian and a disciple according to the way He tells us to be it. Not one that's just a little bit out away from the world. Not one that just goes a little bit. I'll be a little bit of a Christian. No, God doesn't, not, God's not interested in your little bit of an effort. He wants you to wholeheartedly follow Him. That's what He wants. Number three. Go to Exodus chapter 10. Look at 8 through 11. Third compromise that the devil will try to get the Christian to do. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto him, Go serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses says, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds. We will go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. We're taking everyone. There ain't going to be a critter left at the farm. We're taking it all to go serve the Lord. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go. And your little ones look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord. For that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. What's Pharaoh saying? Alright, if you're going to be this fanatic, that's going to separate yourself, and go and do this, fine. But don't put your kids and your wife and your family through that. You men, go do that. But you leave them back here with us. You know, don't be such a fanatic to drag them into your crazy ideals. You can get out there and preach on the street. You go ahead and do that. Don't drag your kids out there. If you're going to go down to the revival, you go do that. Don't make them sit through the preaching. If you're going to take and quit looking at all this stuff, fine. But let them have their entertainment. Quit trying to make them the fanatic that you are. You know what they're trying to do now? They're trying to brainwash your kids in every aspect of their life. That's what they're trying to do. They care less about you. You're a lost cause. But they're going to hold on to your kids. Hold on to your family. That's the devil's next compromise. It's the devil's next compromise. The ideal of the children of Israel back when they were serving God under Joshua, Joshua in Joshua 24:15, he doesn't have that view. He says, And if it seem evil unto you, serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether it is the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Kids should be taught and trained to serve the Lord. They are part of of the service toward the Lord. They're part of it. 
Training kids is part of it. I'll tell you, I, I have uh, four of my greatest members here is going to be my four kids. Why? Because I can put the time into them. And your kids is who you have the most influence on. Uh, don't let the world train your kids to be disciples of God. You do that. You do that. You train them. Don't trust the world to do it. They're not going to do a very good job. And uh, Abraham, one of the things that God respected out of Abraham was because he knew that he would teach his household after him and train them and lead them. That's part of worshiping God is training your kids to worship them. That's part of it. Your kids, matter of fact, when it came to the children of Israel going to worship the Lord, all their older generation got wiped out. It was the kids that had to take on the legacy for the Lord. It was the kids that God actually respected and used to go into the promised land. It was the young ones. So the children are important, but the devil wants your kids. He wants them kids. He wants you to compromise in that matter. Well, you have no control over your kids. And uh, I, I read, a, it was a uh, terrible article about how Russia right now, they're taking all these kids and they're adopting, making uh, citizens of Russia, giving them to all these Russian parents to raise them and stuff, these Ukrainian kids. And at first, Ukrainian kids were fighting it, but now they're accepting it because they think their parents are dead and stuff. Half these kids, I mean, the parents ain't even dead. They've just stole them. They've basically kidnapped them and took them off to Russia. Terrible thing. Terrible thing to even think about that. And what, what's their ideal in doing that? Well, they know if they can remove the kids, they can change the society. And just make it part of Russia. That's what they're trying to do to that land, is make it part of Russia and change the ideology behind it. Well, that's what the devil wants to do with your kids. He wants to just make them part of the world. Doesn't want them to be separated. So does the, do, does the devil care about my kids? No. As we study in the first part of the book, he'll try to kill all the children. He doesn't care about them. He just doesn't want them worshiping God. Pharaoh tries to act like he cares about the children. You think Pharaoh cared about the Jewish children? He didn't care about them. But he makes it sound like he does. That's the way the devil is. Number four. Exodus chapter 10, verse 24 and 26. This is the last compromise. And it's strange to me the direction of compromise that the devil tries to do with the kids. His last ditch effort compromise is on possessions. Look at Exodus 10, 24 through 26. Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. He says, okay, take the kids, but leave the stock and the herds. Keep your livelihood here in Egypt. Keep your livelihood here in the world. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifice and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. For therefore must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. In other words, Moses says, oh, all that we have has to be taken to serve God. Now this is everything in. The children, the possessions, the cattle, everything's in to serve God. Now that's the last compromise that the devil wants you to do. Alright, you can serve me, but don't, don't sacrifice everything. Keep, keep, keep your possessions here. Keep your job here. Keep your money here. Keep focusing on that retirement. Keep focusing on that big house. Keep focusing on that, making that car. Keep 
focusing on making that money and building up treasures here on earth. That's the devil's compromise. He gets the Christian to focus and keep his possessions in the world. If he can keep his possessions in the world, he can keep his heart. Where your treasures are, there will your heart be also. If he can keep your possessions here in the world, he can keep your heart here. You go serve God to keep your heart here. That's what he's saying. And uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 7, it says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things, but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do not count them, but dumb, that I may win Christ. You know the Christian's attitude. Of uncom- if you're uncompromising as a Christian attitude, it's like this. Lord, everything's yours. My life is yours. My family's life is yours. My family is yours. And everything that I own is yours. My job is yours. You can have it all anytime you want it. Because my life is solely, fully given to you. No holding back. That is what the devil does not want. He wants you to hold a little bit back. Hold something back. And the more he can get you to hold back, the more compromise that you've made with him and not selling out to serve God. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3.2, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. I'll tell you, some Christians compromise because they want to hold on to the things of the earth. I mean, whether it may be your job. You know, your job is not a bad thing to have. Yeah, you should provide. You should have a job. Yeah, you should work for a living. You should go out and earn money and take care of your wife, take care of your kids, pay your bills. You should do those things, but never let those things get between you and what God wants or commands you to do. Will you give up the job? Then you're safe having the job. Will you give up the home? Then you're safe having the home. Will you give up the hobbies? Then you're safe having the hobbies. As long as you're willing to take them and give them to God and not allow them to get between you and God, you're safe in having them. But I'll tell you, if they're keeping your heart in the world, then you've compromised. You've compromised with them. And that's where the compromise comes. The devil wants you to compromise by keeping your possessions and your heart in the world. Alright, let's stop. So those are the four compromises. First, stay in the world. You worship them, but stay in the world. Second, just go a little bit out of the world. Third, you can go out of the world, but leave your kids in the world. Fourth, you can take your kids out of the world, but keep your possessions in your world, because I know if you keep your possessions here, your heart will stay here. That's the four compromises the devil tries to get the Christian to make so he doesn't sell out wholeheartedly to serve the Lord. All right. Let's take a break there and we'll take prayer.